Hi, I'm Garrett. I wanted to know if stick insect eggs could reabsorb water from their environment once they had lost it. First, I dried out a batch of stick insect eggs and found that the less humidity in the air, the faster they dried out. Then I put a second batch of eggs in dry air for a few days to dry them out and then put them back into humid containers. And I found that they did not reabsorb water. Hi, my name is Garrett Jolma and my research project investigated the eggs of the thorny devil stick insect. These stick insects live in the forests of New Guinea. The adults live in cavities in trees, and they come down to the soil to lay their eggs. The eggs take four to six months to develop, which is incredibly long for an insect. And that long development time can pose some challenges for the eggs, namely the finite resources that the eggs are stuck with. This includes things like nutrients, energy for development, and maybe water. I wanted to know if the eggs could reabsorb water once they had lost it. Maybe then a half year development time wouldn't seem so crazy. The first of my two experiments examined rates of water loss and the survival of eggs held in three experimental relative humidities, 100%, 75%, and 0%. This is the graph of the egg masses in the 100% humidity treatment, which was a container with water in the bottom. The eggs maintained their original mass throughout the experiment. Only one egg did not survive. All the others survived to hatch. This is the graph for the 75% humidity treatment, which was a container with salt water in the bottom. The eggs lost mass slowly throughout the experiment, and most of them did not survive. One plucky egg did survive to hatch. This is the graph of the 0% humidity treatment. This container had a layer of dry right salt in the bottom to absorb any water in the air. These eggs dried out real quick, some of them even reaching their dry mass of 40 milligrams. None of these eggs survived. Together, these graphs show that the lower the humidity, the higher the rate of water loss. This is pretty intuitive. The drier the air, the faster the eggs dry out. These graphs also show that the stick insect eggs can only survive a narrow range of humidities. And the lower bound of survivability is somewhere above 75% humidity, since most of the intermediate treatment, 75% eggs, died. Now to see if the eggs could reabsorb water once they lost it, I got a second batch of eggs and put them into another dry right salt treatment. I weighed these eggs regularly, and when an egg reached 90% of its original mass, I transferred it into one of two rehydration treatments. The first rehydration treatment was identical to the 100% treatment from before. It was just the container with water in the bottom to keep it at 100% humidity. The second rehydration treatment was the same, but with the addition of wet cotton, and so the eggs could sit on that, and that would simulate a wet substrate. So one was just humidity, and one was humidity with a wet substrate. This is the result. Across the board, the eggs gained some mass back, but they never returned to their original mass. This little uptick in mass here is likely just the eggshell becoming wet again. The embryo inside the egg doesn't seem to be able to absorb any water. That means, for these eggs, water is a finite resource. Once they lose it, they can't get it back. The only water they have access to is what they are prepackaged with when they are laid in the soil. So to recap, the drier the air, the faster the eggs dry out. The eggs prefer to live in very high humidities, preferably close to 100% humidity. And once they lose water, they can't get it back from their environment. Hi, I'm Garrett Jolma, graduate of the University of Montana. My research project focuses on the eggs of the thorny devil stick insect. Eurycantha calicarata. Uh, the thorny devil lives in the forests of New Guinea. They can be found high in the trees, usually in nooks and crannies and cavities in the tree trunks. Despite the scary name, they're actually herbivores and they come out at night to feed. Uh, as you can see here, they can be quite beefy bugs. The females are actually larger than the males and they can get up to 15 centimeters long. To lay their eggs, the females crawl down to the forest floor poke their ovipositor into the ground, and lay their eggs one by one into the soil. The eggs are also quite large in terms of insect eggs. They can weigh up to 100 milligrams. The eggs also take four to six months to develop, which is incredibly long for an insect. Usually for insects, the span of time between laying and hatching is something like a matter of days. Eggs make an interesting research subject because they're the closest thing to a closed system we get in the biological world. The whole point of an egg is to keep out things like pathogens and parasites while the embryo inside develops. Now this can pose some challenges for the embryo inside because things are so blocked off, 
the only thing crossing the eggshell are things like water and gases like oxygen and CO2. Knowing what a closed system eggs are and that these eggs take four to six months to develop, this poses some unique problems for the thorny double stick insect. You can't absorb nutrients as an egg, uh, so all you've got is what you were laid with. I wanted to know if these eggs that take half a year to develop could absorb water from their environment. Maybe then taking half a year to develop wouldn't be so crazy. Their natural habitat is also very humid, so it seems like a plausible hypothesis. First, I had to figure out how quickly the eggs lost water. Was it a quick process or a slow process? So I took 60 stick insect eggs from a colony of insects and split them into three experimental treatments of 20 eggs each. The 20 eggs went into a 24 well plate and each of those 24 well plates went into a Tupperware container. Uh, the 100% humidity treatment was just a Tupperware container with regular tap water in the bottom to keep the air humid. The 70, about 75% humidity treatment had saturated salt water in the bottom. And then the 0% humidity treatment had a layer of dryerite salt in the bottom to suck up any water that was in the air. And all of these treatments were kept at a constant temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Then I weighed these eggs regularly every three days, and then as time went on, the interval increased to every week, and then every two weeks, and then a month, and then two months. This is the result of the 100% humidity treatment. All these graphs were made in Python and not R, because even though this is a biology research project, I learned to code in an astronomy class. Anyway. Blue lines show the eggs that hatched, and the orange line shows the one that didn't. As you can see, the eggs lost negligible mass. Most of the eggs are between 80 and 90 milligrams in the beginning, and they're still between 80 and 90 milligrams at the end. Any hatchlings from this batch of eggs were captured, labeled, and saved for future morphological measurements. The eggs in the 75% humidity treatment did lose mass due to dehydration, but slowly. Well, except for this one. Not sure what happened to him. Only one of the eggs in the intermediate treatment survived to hatching. That hatchling was uh, saved for future morphological measurements. Here are the eggs in the 0% humidity treatment. These eggs lost mass pretty quickly. Some of them dried out so quickly that they had no more water left to lose, and their mass over time bottomed out. Basically, I found that the dry mass of a stick insect egg is about 40 milligrams. And obviously, none of these eggs hatched. Once I'd figured out how the eggs lost water under different experimental humidities, I wanted to see if they could reabsorb water once they had lost it. For the second experiment, I got 30 eggs from the same insect colony and stuck them in a container that was identical to the 0% treatment from before, just a container with a layer of dry right salt in the bottom to suck out any water from the air. I weighed the eggs regularly, and when I found that one of the eggs had dipped to 90% of its original mass, I transferred it out of that and into one of two rehydration treatments. One rehydration treatment was identical to the 100% humidity treatment from before. It was just a container with water in the bottom. Uh, the other one had the added luxury of having wet cotton balls for the eggs to sit on top of. This was to mimic uh, wet soil. So again, one of those rehydration treatments is just humidity, and one is humidity and wet substrate. Once each egg had its new home in a rehydration treatment, I weighed them regularly to track any changes in mass, and th this experiment was also held at a constant 22 degrees Celsius. Here are the results of the rehydration experiment. Each line has this initial downward slope because of the dry right salt treatment. And once they reached 90% original mass, I transferred them into the rehydration treatments. That's what these sharp ticks are in the middle of each line. As you can see, each egg gained a little bit of mass, but it didn't last. This is probably just the effect of the eggshells becoming wet or humidified again. Because the line doesn't keep moving up, that means the embryo inside can't absorb water from outside. Okay, so what does this all mean? The dehydration experiment shows that the lower the ambient humidity, the quicker the eggs dry out. This makes sense. The drier the air, the faster they dry out. The eggs in the 100% humidity treatment couldn't dry out at all because the air was already saturated with water vapor. While nearly all of the 100% humidity eggs survived, only one of the 75% humidity eggs made it. If 100% humidity is optimal, but even 75% humidity is too low to keep the eggs alive, this means that there's only a narrow range of survivable humidities for these stick insect eggs. 
And obviously, the lower bound of this range is somewhere above 75% since nearly all of those eggs died. This also makes sense. It shows that these stick insects are well adapted to their humid home habitat. Maybe that's why stick insects lay their eggs in the soil. If you want your eggs to be protected from scavengers and sitting at 100% humidity, the soil is the perfect place. The interstitial spaces between the soil are about as humid as you can get, and underground, they're tucked away from predators. If you look closely at that one egg that survived the intermediate treatment, you'll see it has a lower rate of water loss than the other eggs. The slope of its line is more shallow. This probably means that it lost less water proportional to its original mass. That makes me think there's a maximum survivable mass loss for each egg. So there's probably a certain percentage of mass loss that an egg can withstand before it stops functioning. And because the rate of water loss is tied to the percentage of humidity in the air, these two numbers, the maximum survivable mass loss and the minimum survivable humidity, are probably tied. Finding those two numbers would be a great future experiment. The fact that the eggs failed to reabsorb water from their environment shows that to them, water is a finite resource. The only water that they have access to is what they were prepackaged with. So any way that these eggs could conserve water would be to their benefit. And maybe that's why these eggs take so long to develop. Say you had a non-conductive eggshell that kept water from crossing, then that would also mean that gases would have a hard time crossing that same eggshell. So maybe in the name of conserving water, these eggs are limiting the amount of gases getting in and out. If these eggs are just sipping on oxygen, maybe that's why it takes them four to six months to develop. I did a whole third experiment on the metabolic rates of these eggs to measure how much oxygen is going in, how much CO2 is going out. Uh, if you'd like to see that, uh, my whole report is in the description. So to recap, the drier the air, the faster these eggs dry out. The minimum survivable humidity is probably above 75%, and these eggs cannot reabsorb water once they lose it. So water is a finite resource for them. But now for the agonizing question that every scientist in basic research gets. Why does this matter? How is my life different that I know that eggs can't reabsorb water? First, this project is able to inform the study of eggs in general. Any organism that lays an egg faces a lot of the same challenges. How do you pack enough nutrients into a small space? How do you make sure that you don't lose water? Well, you have an impenetrable eggshell, but you don't want it to be too impenetrable or else gases like oxygen can't get in. All basic research, while basic, is woven into a larger context, and that research benefits the entire fabric, not just the stitch I wove. Second, this experiment is another pointer to the consequences of climate change. These eggs require high humidity to survive. What if New Guinea sees a drop in precipitation in the coming decades? Are we willing to let another species be driven to extinction by our hands? So what if these bugs all die? Why should I care? To that, I can only offer a shotgun answer and hope that something sticks. Why should you care if these insects die off? I don't know, because they're cool? Because if they die off, they're a symptom of larger destruction? Because this planet is all we've got because Genesis 2 says we should care for this world that we've been given? Because why not care? Third, if nothing else, this research project has shown me that science, real quantitative science, can be done by anyone on a shoestring budget. The containers that I used for this experiment are just ones like these that I bought at Walmart. Usually people think of science as big personalities, big telescopes, and eureka moments. But the truth is a lot more humble. Remember kids, the only difference between screwing around and doing science is writing it down. A big thank you to Dr. Art Woods for taking me under his wing and into his lab. Thanks for the ideas behind these experiments and for all the guidance in experimental design. Thanks to Rowan Boisseau for use of his stick insect colony. Uh, thanks for the bits of computer code that he let me use to analyze some things. And thanks for all the help actually executing the experiments. Uh, thank you to my friend Lexi Clowder for helping find the stick insect eggs. She had to actually dig through bug poop to find the eggs. So big thank you, Lexi. And finally, thanks to my lovely wife, Maggie, for use of her nice camera. Thank you.